Hello there, THP 494 and 598. Matthew here. So when we left off, we had just finished putting together our audio module and we had kind of gotten something rolling right here that was looking pretty good and was giving us a bunch of options. But the next question is, what do we do with that? How do we start to actually build some interesting audio visual kind of representations that pull some of these ideas together? And the direction we're going to head is we're actually going to look at how we might approach that in a number of different directions. So these are like four different examples of what we might think of when we're uh, visualizing some of our audio. And that's all well and good. The first one we're going to actually start to dive into looks just like this. Now this is based off of the work of Patrick Lechner, and he's got a, a book that's really quite wonderful, I highly recommend it, by Pact Publishing, called Multimedia Programming Using Maximus P and Touch Designer. It's lovely. Take a look at it. I recommend it. It's really wonderful. So we're going to start to dive into this idea. We're going to take advantage that we've already done this all this audio analysis. And so to get started here, we're going to build several different modules all in one place. So let's go ahead and make a new container. And this is going to go ahead and house a bunch of that um, kind of stuff for us, right? So just like I had this example here that I showed you, the single window that uh, has a place for all four of these kinds of uh, visualizations, that's what we're going to go ahead and build here. So let's get started with a single container. I'm going to call this EX1 for example one. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and give this a resolution of 1066 by nine, excuse me, by 600 and, whoa, heavens, 1066. Wonderful, by 600. Great. Now let's go ahead and dive inside here. Now there are a few things that we're gonna wanna actually have at our disposal while we're in here working a little bit. Um, and the first one of those, uh, is to remember that we probably still want to use uh, some of the things that we've already established with um, our kind of... So one of the first things I want to think about adding here is a base. And I'm going to go ahead and set up a set of local variables. All right. One of the first things I want to think about adding here to my network is I want to go ahead and continue on with the convention that we've already established of using local as a basis included in any of the networks that we're building. I want to rely on modules here. And so we know that a part of that, right, is setting up our base. And we're going to call this local. We'll head inside. We'll add another base. We'll call this modules. And then inside of here, let's go ahead and add a text dat. Now, one of the things that I know that we're going to want to actually extract several times uh, as we go along the way uh, is our audio analysis, right? So I'm going to go ahead and call this audio because this happens, this is going to hold all of the paths for that. So I know that I probably want a few things, right? And let's go ahead and take a look at what those might be. So over here on the right, I'm going to back out of modules and local. I'm going to go all the way over here to audio. And inside of here, I'm going to take a closer look at what's going on. So I've got this analysis business. So I probably want this thing called out. I probably also want this thing called final. Um, and it's feeding our analysis over here, but it also is a kind of uh, audio stream that's happening from whatever audio is playing over here in this module. And so this is a really great kind of consistent stream that I might rely on in some way to be able to pull from. So I'm going to call that stream. So we've got stream. And that's going to be equal to, and we're going to work, we're going to rely just on the kind of path to that. And we're going to create an absolute path for that. So we can see here, if we look up here in the path bar, slash audio slash final, right? Slash audio slash final is going to be the absolute path to this particular operator. Next, I'm going to want uh, analysis. A-N-A-L-Y-S-S-I-S, all right. And analysis is going to be equal to, inside of our analysis module, this out one module, right? Because this is likely to be something that I want. And rather than thinking about what the path is to that all the time, I can rely on modules to help me with that. So again, this is going to be slash audio. 
slash analysis slash out one. And we can see that our path right here, right, slash audio slash analysis slash out one, Are all consistent, and that's perfect. That's lovely. Now there's some other things that we want to add here at some point, but this is enough to get us started. So with our local set up here, let's go ahead and add another container, and we can go ahead and close this bad boy up right over here. Now this container, I want to go ahead and rely on the fact that my parent, right, my parent's got some dimensions already established here. And what I want is I want this thing that I make to be one quadrant here. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm going gonna, gonna to go ahead and ask for a parent dot par dot width divided by two. And my heart height can be the same thing, parent par height divided by two. So my width divided by two, my height divided by two. Excellent. And I might go ahead and give this one a name because I happen to know what I'm going to make in here. And this is going to be my high, mid, low. That's the kind of visualizers that I'm going to work on making in here. So we've got some of our primary ingredients uh, established. Let's go ahead and dive inside here and let's drop down a select chop. Now, we already did all that headache of setting up our local modules. So in terms of the select that we're looking for, we should be able to just go ahead and specify that we want me.mod dot audio and we want analysis and we need to make sure that this is actually an expression and there we have it so we just use our uh, shorthand right for our module to go ahead and extract all of that for us it's great it evaluates uh, the expression that's over in our local modules and it returns this pathway for us this is really quite lovely very handy and it means that um, we can now make sure that we've selected that particular audio, which is exactly what we wanted to. Now, I've kind of got a beginning of what I want uh, here in this chop viewer. So I can see I've got these three bars that are high, mid, low. And I kind of want to think about how can I take those and transform them uh, into a set of bars that move up and down uh, and that are high, mids, and lows for me. Okay, so to get us started here, let's begin um, by first thinking about what that might mean in terms of uh, a texture operator. So I'm going to go ahead and drop in a rectangle top because this is what we're going to start by working with. Now this particular rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change a couple values on it. I'm going to give it a size of 1 by 1. So its size fills this entire region. That's great. And what I'm going to start to think about is the fact that I want to take this and I want to split it into a high, mid, and a low. That's really what I'm doing here. So I'm going to use this single rectangle and then I'm going to transform it. And I'm going to actually tr think about transforming it three times. Now there are a few things that we might want to do before we get there. Um, and one of the first things that I might want to do is add a math chop because I happen to know that I want to change the signal just a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and then add a null to the end of this, because we know that with a null here at the end, if we need to make any other changes, it's going to be nice and easy to do that. And let's go ahead and take these and clean this up a little bit. You can make your network as tidy as you'd like. Now I know I need three transforms, right? Um, but I also happen to know that I might think about reusing some of these parameters from uh, transform to transform. And in fact, mm, I actually don't think I'm going to do that. So let's go ahead and uh, use just our one transform, make three copies of it, and lay it out here. Now I'm going to scooch this down here just a little bit. And what I want to do is I actually want to think about how I can take this transform and then move it in its Y position based on what's happening here in my audio. So here in transform one, in my translate parameter in TY, or actually not in TY, but in the scale Y, uh, what I want to do is I want to actually scale this based on what's happening here in my low. So I'm going to grab my low channel out of this null. 
I'm going to bring it over here to my transform, and I'm going to go ahead and drop that right on SY. Now, this is working pretty well, um, but this is not entirely what I want, right? We can see that I'm scaling from the middle, and a part of what's going on there is that this is based on our pivot point. So our pivot point is set right in the center of our texture operator, right? It's right here in the middle. And what I really want to do is I want the point of transition to be lower. I'd actually like it to be down here at the bottom. So I'm going to leave this pivot point position at an X position of 0 0.5, but I'm going to move it down to 0. And that then moves how we're going to scale this based on the bottom of this texture rather than on the middle of this texture. So then here in my transform, all right, in my transform 2, I'm going to do a similar kind of thing. Let's grab that mid. Let's go ahead and apply this to scale, y, relative. I'm going to set that at 0. We'll do that one last time with high. Scale y. Oops, and I applied that to the, oh, no, I think I might have applied that to the right place. There we go. And let's just go through and make sure that everything looks right. Low. Oops, this should be mid. I did make a small mistake there. And high. So we've got our lows, our mids, our highs. We've got all that set up with our single transform here. So we're off to a pretty solid start. Now, while we're at it, let's go ahead and let's add one more uh, translate here. Right, we're going to add one more transform top. And in this transform top, what we're going to think about doing is uh, just a few other small operations. So what I want is I don't want just a full bar here across uh, the whole width. What I want is just like, one little part of this. So we're going to go ahead and take this particular transform and let's first scale it. So we're actually going to reduce the scale here uh, to 0 0.26 by 0 0.87. So here now we've got this kind of squashed rectangle that's going to show up for us instead. And we can see if we take a closer look here that it's scooted up from the bottom a little bit. And we also know that it's not going to go all the way to the top, right? If we were to just pass our rectangle signal over here, we can see that it's um, kind of reformatted, right, or scaled in such a way to make sure that we don't go past the top or the bottom. And it gives us a nice kind of framing. So that's an excellent place for us to start there. And then we're going to go ahead and translate this to the left by negative 0.3. And we might call that 0.3. And now we can see, as soon as our music restarts here, that we've kind of scooted this over to the left. Now we want to use that same idea here for our next uh, transform operator. So we're going to take our transform 2 and we'll plug this into another transform. Now we're going to go ahead and write a, a quick expression here to make sure that our transforms are all connected. So I'm, rather than just hard coding in uh, this 0 0.26, 0 0.87, I'm going to rely on the fact that I want to grab that from our first operator. So I'm going to instead ask for the operator that's called transform4, this operator right here, and the parameter called sx. We'll do the same thing, copy, paste for SY. That's great. Now we can see here that I'm still in the middle. And this particular um, operator, I don't want it to translate at all. I want it to be stuck right here in the middle. Perfect. Excellent. We can copy and paste this one. And now what I want to do is, rather than translating this one uh, in no direction, right? I don't want it to be at 0, 0 anymore. This one I want it to be at 0 0.3. So if we were to composite these three together, we could kind of get a quick look at what that would mean. Right, so this is the direction that we're going, right? We've got our highs, our mids, our lows, right? Highs, mids, lows that show up here. And this is kind of in the direction that we want, but we're still missing a couple things, right? Because I'd like this to have a little bit of color. I'd like that color to change as it goes up. So there are a few other things that I actually want here that are not totally there yet, and that's okay. But this is where we're going.
In fact, we might scoot this right along over here. And let's just go ahead and take this and disconnect all of our operators from it. And we can leave this here for a second because we're going to come back to it. Now, before we get moving along too much, there are a few other things that we need to start to think about, which is how are we going to start to do some of that transforming? And, and how are we going to apply some of those colors? Like, what's that going to look like? So uh, to kind of implement some of that idea, we're going to kind of revisit what cloning is. I know that we've done a fair bit with cloning and replicating. So we're going to go ahead and make a base. And we're going to set up our kind of uh, master network inside of this. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and call this master. And what I want to pass into this are three different things. I want to pass in uh, both the audio signal in question, right? So like the channel operator that's respond or the channel from a channel operator that is responsible for what it is that I want to see move. I want the texture oper operator that corresponds to that. And then I also need some lookup values. Now we're going to use a, a chop called the lookup, or excuse me, a top called the lookup top that we haven't talked about before, which I think is pretty exciting and a lot of fun. Uh, so let's go ahead and start to think about what this is going to be. Right? So if, well, let's go ahead and just add a ramp top right in here for one hot second, because we're going to use this quite a bit. So here inside of our master, uh, we need to, to be able to pipe in a few things here. So we're going to need an in chop, and then we're going to need an in top, and in fact, we're going to need two in tops. So there's one, two. And we should now see that out here on the top, we've got an in, an in, and an in. Excellent. We're also going to want to pass out a signal at the end of all of this. And rather than leaving this, well, no, let's go ahead and leave it called out. Uh, leave it with the name out one. Because that means that our master uh, base here is already set up to use that as a background display. OK. So this is, this is getting close. This is almost what we want. But what's, what's going on here? Um, let's change our ramp here just slightly to make sure that uh, we've got a few things kind of dialed in for us. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and change this to be a horizontal ramp. And we're going to change the resolution to be 256 by 1, because I only need this to be 1 pixel tall. Now, our colors here are quite lovely. Um, from black to white, but this isn't exactly what I want. I want a few other things to be kind of dialed in here. And um, we'll kind of we'll come back and kind of uh, take a closer look at some of this, but I happen to know that I want I want seven keys all together. So one, two already exist. Three, four, five, six, seven. I know that way down here on the end. I probably want this to be something that's more in the blue range. And all the way over here on the right, I want this to be more in the kind of like hot red range. Wonderful. And then here in the middle, I want a few different things. This guy is probably going to be also red. So let's just get rid of this key, add another key, and bring it on over a little bit. And then this should probably be something in the orange kind of range. We've got a yellow in here. And you're welcome to kind of play with this in any way that you like and find the colors that are right for you and the spacing that's right for you. This just happens to be the kind of look uh, that I'm after here. And this will make more sense in a second, but we kind of have to build some of this ramp in order to get us started. And we're going to add one more key here and bring this on over. There we go. All right, so now we're starting to have this lookup ramp that we can rely on. Uh, and this ramp is going to kind of provide us with some of the values that we're going to use up here in our master. OK, let's start to look at what all of this means. We've got one other step that we need to do, and that's that we need to add a select. So we're going to drop in a select here, and we're going to just go ahead and select out just our lows. Right, and we might copy, paste, paste, and just uh, get all of these done while we're up to no good.
There we go. Lows, mid, and this should be high. Great. So we've got our lows, our mids, our highs. This happens to correspond with what's going on here. All right, so what are we up to? Well, first let's go ahead and pass some signals in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass in my low. I'm gonna pass in our first kind of transform here, and then I'm also gonna pass in this lookup key, this lookup ramp, so we can see what's going on. Okay. So here inside, if we back out here for just one second, we can see that we're still waiting on our audio to restart. So once our audio restarts, we should start to see a little bit of movement here in this rectangle. Right, so we can start to see a little bass kick happening. And here, we can see the low incoming signal. We've got our bass kick, and then we've got a lookup ramp that we can start to work with. Okay, so how do we use that then? We can start to use that by uh, doing a few different things. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and convert this to a top. So we're going to use the chop to top to convert this signal into uh, a pixel representation that is somewhere between alpha and pure white. So zero uh, is alpha, it's completely transparent, and one would be white, complete white, right? And what we'll do is we'll then uh, use a lookup. So our lookup top here is actually gonna go ahead and rely on that to help solve some of these problems. So if we plug in our look at lookup, our ramp, here into this particular um, operator, what we're seeing is that this value of 0 to 1 now corresponds uh, with what's going on here in our lookup from 0 to 1. So we're kind of searching, we're scrubbing back and forth here between the left and the right to see what that is. And we could, for example, let's, uh, real fast, let's kind of see that happen a little bit better. So I'm going to drop in a constant. I'm going to use my constant here instead. Uh, and this is just to help us kind of visualize what's going on. So in my constant, as I start to run from 0 all the way to 1, I can see that I go from 0 all the way to 1. Right, that should hopefully be clear in terms of what's happening there. So I've got a kind of uh, a set of pixel values that correspond to what's happening in this signal. So that's what our lookup is helping us to do here. So we've got our lookup. With our lookup, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of multiply magic in terms of our top. And we're going to go ahead and then take these two signals. So we're going to multiply oops, this change by what's happening over here. And now we can see that our rectangle goes, uh, is going to have a corresponding color value that is uh, consistent with uh, what's going on over here. right? So the higher this bar gets, the closer we get to red, uh, which is what we're all after. Now, this is a little bit messy, uh, which is okay for right now. But we might want to clean that up just a little bit. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, think differently about how I've got these things plugged in. So I'm actually going to plug my ramp into my top value, and I'm going to plug my transform into the second inlet. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and just swap a couple things. There we go. That is looking almost right. Ah, aha, there we go. Finally, that's nice and tidy. And in fact, we could probably scooch all this down a little bit, and that gives us a kind of better sense of what our signal flow is actually looking like and behaving like here inside of this particular operator. Now, we're going to actually use this as a master. So I'm going to take this and drop it right in the clone parameter. And then I'll take it and make um, one, two, three copies. And we'll just kind of scooch it down here a little bit. Now, I've got to change a few things, right? So 
Um, I'm going to disconnect all my wires here from my first uh, master operator. Now, what I want is I uh, want the low signal to go into the first one. My next one is going to be mids. The last one is going to be highs. I want this ramp to be plugged into the first inlet in all three, but then I want my uh, rectangle, right, my transform rectangle, to go into the second inlet. Right, so we've got a little kind of mishmash, mishmash of wires, excuse me, here going on. But what we've done is we've taken the low, mid, and high, and we've connected that to a corresponding low. And we actually can't give this the same. Oh, in fact, this is probably okay because we haven't named anything that yet. So we've got a low, a mid, and a high. And now these things all correspond together, right? We're kind of up to a little bit of mischief here with how we're playing with some of these ideas. And we're going to go ahead and use our uh, chop up here, our kind of chop signal to kind of ferret all of that out. And then we've got our ramp as a lookup table to kind of figure out all that as well. Okay. So now that we've got all of that kind of working, let's grab uh, all of uh, our operators here and let's plug them into our composite. So we've then taken these and we are now adding all of them together as our operand method. So we've kind of set some of that up and now let's let's build like a little bit of a feedback network to help that um, look just a little bit prettier. So we're going to take this and we're going to use a feedback top. We want to also add a little bit of blur because I want this to have just a little bit of glow to it. Um, and I'm going to turn its filter size here up to 9. I'm going to include a level because that'll help me uh, ensure that some of this will behave the way that I want it to. And then I'm going to finally composite at the end of all of this. We've made lots of feedback loops already, so this should all look pretty familiar. Let's remember that we need to go ahead and change our feedback method to add. Now, we've got too much going on here in our level, right? We happen to know that. So let's turn our opacity in the post page down to 0 0.868. And in our pre-range, we can give this a black level of 0 0.01. Yeah, that's looking pretty good so far. We've kind of got a solid blue here at the bottom. Um, this is not quite the blue that I want. That's OK. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and view this. So I'm going to bring this up here. And now, because these three operators are all clones, oh, and in fact, I don't even have to do that. We can worry about what's going on here in our ramp. Because what I want to do is I want this deep blue to be like an even darker blue. I want it to be a little more midnight. And this blue should be maybe a little bit more towards the violet side. There we go. Now I've got a small problem here, and that's the is that when there's no signal at all, I don't see anything. It completely disappears. And while in audio land, that's probably what I want. Uh, in terms of visualizing this, having a kind of visual feedback system, I probably want to see something there. So I'm going to head over here to my math. And in my math, uh, I'm going to do just like a little bit of futzing. I'm going to, in my range, or excuse me, in my multi-add, in my pre-add, I'm just going to add 0 0.04. I'm just going to add enough that it always shows up here at the bottom. That way it's always persistent. And I'm going to multiply this by 1.65 because I want it to have a slightly larger scale. I want there to be just like a little bit more animation in terms of what I'm seeing here show up. Okay. So... This is looking pretty good so far. I see an awful lot of white still in this. So I might come in here and even turn down a little bit of the brightness that's going on in some of these just to kind of make sure I've got a little more variation in terms of color. Yeah, that's getting close to what I want. Now, this is a bit of a mess here, right? Because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach this to an out. And in fact, if I wanted to tidy up this portion of my network, what I might do is box select these items, 
right click on my network and then uh, collapse the selected here. So now I've actually just gone ahead and made a little base out of that. And I might call this feedback so I know what it's actually doing. And if we look here inside, we're going to need to tidy this up just a little bit. But we can also see that we've uh, got a network in here that's set up with an in, all the operators that we had working, and then it's piped out also. So this is uh, a nice, easy way for us to kind of compartmentalize a bunch of these things all at once. And we've got that all put together and made. Whew, nice work. And if we back out here a little bit more, now all we need to do is, in our, our container, make a few other changes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and set the background in our panel, right, to dot slash bg. And let's make sure that how we change the name of this out to BG. We should get a little reminder asking us if we want to change everything, and we can say yes to all. So now that's going to show up here. Now this is scaled differently, right? We've taken something that was square, we've made it into a rectangle. And so what we can choose to do in terms of our top fill is we can just choose to fill height. So now we've just got kind of some black bars on either side, and that's just perfect for us. Right, and we might we could change the dimensions of this right by changing a rectangle because if we were to view this, we'd see that this is not actually that large. But depending on what we're actually manipulating with this, um, we might not want it to be that big. The other thing that I might think about is I might think about giving this some borders, right? Giving this a little bit more kind of an interesting kind of composition and how we frame this. Uh, if we look at this other one. Uh, that we have as an example, right? Bring it on over here. See that we've got these borders that show up around the edge of this. Now we could certainly in the color um, page, right? We could come in here and we could specify a unique color for all of these. But we also know that um, because we practiced this the last time around, then we might take that same idea uh, and we might lean on the fact that we could go ahead and create a module for that. So we've already created uh, one of those modules. Let's come over here and borrow this one. Right? We're going to go ahead and just copy. So we're going to borrow our header module from our audio. We'll come in here, and we'll drop that down. And now we've got uh, our base here, or excuse me, our uh, text top here for us. And in this case, um, this isn't necessarily going to be a header, right? This might be, um, what do we want to call this? Well, let's just call this bin. So let's say this is a bin background. We've got a bin uh, border A, and we've got a bin border B. Now, for right now, let's go ahead and just copy these, right? We can certainly come back and make these unique later on, but for right now, this is going to help us just kind of get these established. And now we have them up here and working already. That's lovely. Now let's implement some of that. So we'll come out here. In our high, mids, lows, let's in our uh, border A, me, mod, bin, B, A. Uh, and actually, we need a dot UI in there first. Excellent. And we can just go ahead and change this to reflect the positions in the list. Wonderful. We'll do the same thing for our border B. And all we need to do is change our values in our list to correspond to the position of these. There we go. And then we're just going to turn our borders on. Border A, border A, border A, border A. And now we can see that we've got these nice little borders that show up on the edge of this. Now that might not seem like a huge to-do, um, but it's certainly going to give us a nice kind of framing convention in terms of what shows up around the edge of these modules that we're going to build. And in fact, what we can lean on 
is that we can lean on the fact that we've done this once so that when we build our uh, next modules, what we can do is we can start by just copying and pasting this, and then we can move in here and just dump out the contents. And so we'll look at that next, and we'll kind of explore what that means a little bit. But to get us started, what we've gone ahead and done is we've built a little visualization module so we can kind of see the lows, mids, and highs that are pumping right along in this particular audio. Uh, we set all of that up in here. We used some clones to help make that work. And we did some transforming. We used the look up top for the first time, which is excellent. And we've got something that's cooking right along. OK, so next up, what we're going to do is we'll start to look at some other visualization techniques. Uh, and that includes this kind of oscilloscope kind of model, and then some other spectrograph kind of models as well, which will be a lot of fun to kind of play around with and experiment with. All right, that is where we're going. And uh, I can't wait to keep on keeping on with all of you. All right, till the flip side.